What's up, fellas? Well, we got, sounds like a good one here, so I thought I'd bring y'all along for the ride. Customer, I just got off the phone with the customer, and he says uh, that he put a new capacitor on himself, and uh, he, he said the fan motor had its own separate capacitor, and he put on a capacitor for the compressor, and now, uh, ever since he did that, the, the the contactor is not pulling in on its own, and he said it was. But he says that the indoor fan is still blowing, so that tells me we don't have a burnt fuse. But it should be interesting to uh, to see. It's it's always interesting when the homeowner works on their equipment, you know, first, and then they call they call uh, a heat and air company after that to come take a look at it. Those are usually always pretty fun. So, anyway, we're headed that way, and uh, we'll see if we can get some film on it. All right, here's our culprit. Got a nice capacitor dangling in the box here. Contactor's not pulled in. He, there's his new capacitor. It actually looks like he's got it wired right. I'm going to try this right here. Nope, that's not it. All right, guys, let me get my meter out and start doing some troubleshooting. All right, guys, after doing some troubleshooting, this is our this is our incoming power from the field connection. I had 24 volts between common and red, which should always be present. And then I had it between common and yellow, which tells me that we have a call for cooling. But when I check it right here for Y out and common, we do not have 24 volts so I tested this high pressure switch to make sure that it wasn't open and it's not it's closed and then so I removed the defrost board and if you look right there we got us a nice burnt spot right where Y1 and common come out it's nice and burnt right there so we're gonna run to the supply house and get a defrost board all right, guys, I have my new parts. I have my defrost controller and a new contactor. He approved the new contactor also, because you can see it's that one's kind of burnt. So I'm going to start working on putting the defrost board on, and then we'll move to the contactor. All right, we got the old defrost board off. Got the new one installed. Uh, these, these sensors are soldered in, so it comes with new plug-in sensors. Right there those two white ones with the black wires we ran them down in here there's my bundle and uh we hooked them up and tyler's working on the new contactor right now so uh we'll get the new contactor mounted in place and get it wired up and then this thing should run all right guys all the new parts are in new defrost board new contactor and the new capacitor installed by the customer and I strapped up the fan capacitor because I cannot stand to see capacitors dangling or left in a box it's just ridiculous but we're gonna start it up wrong way Compressor did not kick over. So that's not good. And I pushed the contactor in manually before I did all this and the compressor did kick over. So we we'll figure out what's going on. Okay, well now that we have the common wire hooked to the compressor. <laughs> We forgot to hook up the common coming from the compressor. We forgot to hook it on the contactor. See, anybody can make a mistake. But now that we've done that, let's try this again. That's better. It'll work better that way. All right, well, she's off. And a customer asked to check the Freon, which we would have done anyway, but we are going to do it. We're going to check the Freon for him, and uh, we'll get 
back to y'all. Well, that's never a good sign. Negative 19 on the pressure. Alright guys, I found the leak. It's under here. I'm sure you guys can hear that. It's on the back side on the the back side of that solder joint on that dryer. I can't actually pinpoint it, but I can feel it. And y'all, I'm sure y'all can hear it. I'm waiting on, I'm uh, trying to get in touch with the customer to see if he wants to make the repair and load this thing up with uh, R22. Because uh, we don't use retrofits here. And, uh, or if he wants to look at a system replacement or what he wants to do. If he does decide to repair it, I'm just going to cut this dryer out. And I'm going to, and I'm going to put a piece of copper right there and I'm going to install the new dryer outside the cabinet. So, I'm waiting on him to call me back to see what he wants to do, but see when I put my finger back there yep she's a leaker mama she's a leaker all right we'll see what he wants to do all right guys we're packing it up I got the new just throw this in there real quick got the new tech M MCT from Vito really loving it great bag but anyway we're packing it up uh, Customer don't want to spend the money to uh, fix the refrigerant leak. You know, I uh, told him what he was looking at, and he didn't like what he heard. And I told him, you know, if he decided to buy a system, that it would, you know, be thousands of dollars. And uh, he didn't like that either. It's a good little unit. It's in good shape. It's worth, it, I mean, it's definitely worth making the repair. I mean, this one here still runs fine. But uh, he said he's going to try to find his own Freon. So, you know, and, and you know, I, I kind of figured, you know, that that it would be, you know, something like this. I mean, not talking bad about the customer or anything. I mean, if that's what he wants to do, that's what he wants to do. You know, because I mean, when when I was dispatched this call, you know, I was told that he, you know, he had made repairs to the unit himself. He had put a new capacitor and tried to make other repairs. So I kind of figured that he wouldn't want to go with the repair. But it is what it is. Uh, and that's all we can do for him uh you know he did need the defrost board he did need the contactor and you know it's you know you take it one step at a time you get the unit up and running discover it's low and you know you try to do you try to you know i could have i could have pinched him a, a whole new system told him it wasn't worth repairing but i didn't do that because that's not the truth fact is this thing is worth repairing i mean yeah it holds a lot of r22 but it's still worth repairing but that's not going to happen today so I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Thank y'all for watching, and we'll see y'all on the next one.